So today we are going to talk about implicit grid in CSS. We have talked about implicit grid briefly before, but now we will go in detail and we will see that how implicit grid works, how we can set the height and the width if of a implicit draw or column, and how we can change the default behavior of grid. So what is implicit grid? So the definition state as that if the the grid outside our defined grid our outside our explicitly defined grid is called implicit grid and we will see that in action uh, here i have a container with two boxes one and two and in this style the styles are pretty much easy and i have two columns and a raw the raw is only one 200 pixel okay so now if i so now if i go to my ht my web browser so you can see that there are two columns and one raw this is my explicit grid which i have defined okay now if i go and uncomment this code out so you can see that the new two elements the new two items which were inserted in this container takes the whole space i have given 200 pixel to the raw but that did not apply on those two items and the reason is that that uh, they follows the column pattern uh, of the explicit grid but not the row and by default in the first video we have seen that if we give a grid uh, to the container all its item tries to cover as much space as they can so the uh, here these three this three third item and the fourth item is implicit item and if i go and said that uh, uncomment this code also so now this fifth and sixth is also an implicit item now if i go and like add more of them these are all implicit item only that these two one and two are the explicit grid which was defined by us through css so now if we there are some cases in which we want to define a particular height for the implicit grid raw or the impl implicit grid column and we want to define a particular height currently it's taking up the available space but suppose if we want to give a particular height to this raw this implicit raw so we have a property in grid and that property is called grid auto raws and in this property we will give 100 pixel okay so now we can see that that implicit raw which was defined now every implicit raw beneath it will have a hundred pixel height so now in order to check that we can uncomment this code out and you can see that similar will be the case for the grid auto columns in the grid auto columns we can define column and then if there is an implicit column that implicit column will have that particular width defined in the grid auto columns property now there is a basic property of grid which i forgot to show you in my early videos and that property is related to gap now suppose if we want to add some particular gap between columns and rows what we can do so in the grid we have a property called grid gap but later on it was deprecated and now the property is stated as gap only so now we have gap and we can set 10 pixel so now if we go to our html we can see that it has applied 10 pixel in, uh, on each column like this is column and 10 pixel here and for rows 10 pixel okay so now it's not adding like 10 pixel for this and 10 pixel for this it's a total of 10 pixel now if i just want on rows i have gap raw gap and it's 10 pixel so you can see that only raw and if i want on column so there is a column gap 10 pixel and you can see that it's also applied on column so now i want to show you a practical example of grid auto flow and columns an implicit grid and this example is taken from the cold steel course uh, and the link will be in the description so you can check it and that, that that's the course i use to revise my grid knowledge and that's a fantastic course and it's available for free then now the the thing is that currently with this code what i can do is that by by clicking this button a new div is generated currently there is no gap so you can see that there is no gap between that but what I want is that I want a brick-like structure, like I want four columns. 
but i don't know how many rows will be there so i want to make a layout which can handle as many rows as because every time the user click a new item will be generated which will create a new row so in order to do that uh, what we can do is display grid okay it's our main thing so now if i go and check it it will by default takes the whole available height okay so now grid template column repeat 4 and 4 and 1 fr 4 and 1 fr now you can see that uh, it we can add gap so gap of 10 pixel now we can see that there are four columns now in order for rows what we can do now we don't know how many rows will be there so in order to tackle it we can use grid outer rows and for the grid outer rows we have we can say 100 pixel okay so now if you add this it will gen generate a new implicit row remember these rows were not defined by us so every row is an implicit row only the columns here are explicit so implicit rows are those rows which are not defined by us as a user the the row and the columns which we defined are called explicit else the rest are implicit rows in columns similar will be the case for the grid auto columns uh, now you can use the grid auto column to generate a layout so if your layout get overflows the uh, grid container will use the, that grid auto column property to create a new column with that specific that specific particular height and width defined there now we're going to talk about grid default behavior by default the grid tries to fill that container with the grid item horizontally like it will fill the container row wise it will fill the row 1 then it will move to the row 2 now we can change that behavior and we can say that you have to fill the row uh, column 1 first then the column 2 then the column 3 and for that we have a property called grid uh, grid auto flow and there we have a property called column and now if we see that now our grid first fills the column 1 then it moves to the column 2 if we closely look here grid auto flow we have a property called dense and now what's the dense is to illustrate it i have created the an id of 1 on the box 1 and then there is the property which i have said that grid column start 2 so now the result behavior is this that the first box is here now i just want to move this box ahead but there is an empty space here just because it's the default behavior of grid and the grid will not fill that space up these two boxes are empty just because there are not enough elements to fill these spaces but this box is empty because the box one was here and now it's move ahead but i want the first box to move ahead but on the second box or the or very next element or any other element to fill up that space i don't want these spaces now for that we have a property called dense grid auto flow now i am saying raw raw is by default the behavior so we don't have to uh, say that but here in this case i am telling raw dense so now what raw dense will do raw dense uh, the first it will fill the it will move the box ahead because there is a grid column start to property but now the second box will fill this element now suppose if i have said that i want the second box to move here on the fourth space so the third and the fourth box will move will move and fill these two spaces which will be left behind by one and two i can say that grid column dense and it will work similarly for this case now the first column was moved here the box was moved here so the so, so the second box just fill up that space and now it's just now the behavior is regular 3 4 5 and 